With the rise of the Steam Deck, Valve's Windows compatibility layer Proton and advancements in peripheral and hardware support, Linux might actually be the better choice for your gaming PC rather than Windows. It doesn't collect and sell any data about you, runs most games with comparable or even slightly better results, has a much lower storage and performance footprint and supports a ton of peripherals and devices. In today's video I'm going to show you how you can install Linux on your gaming PC, run games, configure your hardware as well as fix some minor issues that might come across your way. And let's get straight into it. When it comes to Linux then the first thing that you should know is that it is not really an operating system like macOS or Windows. Technically speaking, Linux is just the kernel or core of an operating system. But since that just complicates things, if you hear someone talking about Linux, what they actually mean are distributions. You might see some users in the online community recommend some of them for work, others for gaming. But the reality is, it doesn't really matter. Practically speaking, you can think of gaming-oriented Linux distros like custom Windows images. They might perform a tiny bit better or serve a specific use case like a handheld. But it's usually not as much of an improvement as you might think. So what I recommend is to look at the visuals that come in the form of desktop environments. Pick one and see what distributions ship it. Since we want a gaming system, you want to pick a distribution that ships the latest version of it. A good baseline for that and my personal recommendation is Fedora. But you can also choose a different one. Right, so I'm going to skip the installation part since it's pretty straightforward on the website and I also already made a couple videos about it. Now if you have an AMD or Intel GPU then you can skip this part. However, if you are on Nvidia then make sure that you have their driver installed, preferably through the software store or package manager. And if that doesn't work, from their official website. Now once the GPU drivers are set up, let's start off by first installing Steam. Now what you should know is that installing software on Linux should be preferably done via the package manager or software store. If you cannot find Steam in it, then I recommend you to look it up for your specific distribution. Once it is installed, you can simply log in and start downloading games that are either natively supported or have already received a compatibility rating from Valve. In order to be able to install every game, you need to enable Steam Play in the settings. You either want to choose the latest stable release or use experimental, which has the advantage or also disadvantage that it continuously updates. Now on a fairly modern system, not older than a couple of years, what I also like to do is to deactivate shader pre-caching, since most GPUs and the graphics drivers can generate them on the fly without any major performance penalties. You know, similar like it works with DirectX on Windows. Some more optimizations are of course disabling mouse acceleration so that your cursor speed is consistent in menus, enabling variable refresh rate support for more performance hungry games and of course setting your display's refresh rate in general. If you want to use a controller on your PC then you should know that most of them that you would typically use are supported out of the box and it doesn't really matter if you use them by cable, Bluetooth or with some adapter. If a device doesn't get picked up right away, the first thing that you can do is to look for updates while it is connected. If a third party package is then found, it automatically installs it. Now of course, there isn't a driver for everything just yet, but you would be surprised how many devices actually work. Alright, let's move on to non-Steam games. I would like to share three applications with you. The Heroic Games Launcher, Lutris and Bottles. Now Heroic is an open source game launcher that can access games from Epic, GOG and Amazon. If you want to access games from one of these platforms then it's a really great choice. However, one little detail, I currently recommend you to download it from their homepage in the RPM format if you are on Fedora like me or Dapp for a Debian based distro. Reason being that Flatpak, the foundation of the one at the software store, is a sandboxed application and it currently has some issues as per description. The second application that I want to show you is Lutris. Lutris is the perfect choice if you want to quickly find a game and also install everything it needs with as little effort as possible. It also has the advantage that it sometimes comes with automated scripts in case a game or a specific version of it needs to be patched for compatibility. The third and my personal choice is Bottles. Now Bottles is not really just an application for gaming but running Windows software in general. The idea behind it is that each bottle has their own little Windows environment and virtual file system. This has the advantage that if you want to remove an application that is known to keep some metadata around, you can simply toss away the entire bottle. Oh and it can't mess with the other ones of course. 
You can either download launchers from a pre-selected list or install them the regular Windows way by executing a setup file. Regardless of which option you choose, you can of course pin games and launchers to the desktop, start menu or wherever else you want to. If you want to know which games are currently working on Linux and how well they do, then the best place to look is of course ProtonDB. It's mainly meant for Steam games and therefore doesn't include everything, but you get a pretty good picture of what usually works without any problems. Speaking of, let's talk about anti-cheat. So some of you might already know that many game developers and publishers nowadays transition to kernel-level anti-cheats, which are supposed to prevent cheating on a really low level. Now some of these solutions obviously don't work on Linux because it's a completely different platform, but that doesn't mean that all of them do. Many games that feature BattleEye, Easy Anti-Cheat and some others have the ability to support Linux. And according to Valve, all that the developers have to do is to reach out to their partners to enable support. Now of course in practice it's not as simple as that and these solutions won't work in the same way as they do on Windows, even if they enable support. On the website Are We Anti Cheat Yet, you get a great overview of games that are already supported, but also on why some of them aren't. And if you don't play any of these unsupported games anyway, then this isn't a concern for you at all. Let's move on to communication TeamSpeak, Telegram, Discord. Pick your poison, it's all supported. However, Discord in particular is in a bit of a tough spot. Like, if you just use it for chatting, it's completely fine. For screen sharing, however, they messed up a lot and Linux is not really that high on their priority list right now. If you run into that infinite screen selection loop, then what you want to do is, to close it, head on over to your software store and download Flatseal, a program which allows you to edit flatpacks, which Discord in our case is. You also want to make sure that you have the X Wayland bridge installed. Then you open up Flatseal, select Discord and scroll down to environment. In here we want to add a new variable that says xdg underscore session underscore type equals x11. Close it and reopen Discord. If everything went according to plan, then when you try to share your screen again, the x Wayland bridge should take care of it. Other current limitations on Linux are screen sharing with audio and the missing overlay. But I'm sure that we will get there once Linux gets a bit more traction. If you want to know how you can change your mouse's DPI, the RGB of your keyboard or your headset settings, then I already made an entire video about it, so make sure to check it out. That was a lot, but also not really that hard now, was it? On Fedora, the Linux distro that I used in this video, everything was just possible without the terminal. And it's actually kind of impressive how far the Linux desktop has come. But that's it for now. I really hope that I could convince at least some of you to give Linux a shot and I can't wait to read about your experiences down in the comments. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then I would really appreciate it if you would show it with a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any more videos. Thank you so much for watching, I wish you a happy gaming experience and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.